The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let's say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you today. And we thank you on this Palm Sunday, Lord, that we can come together. We can gather and worship you. We thank you for our time that each one of us have had with you. But, Lord, we thank you for this corporate time, your body coming together to worship you in spirit and truth. So, Lord, we stand upon the promises of your word. You said that you will inhabit the praises of your people. And, Lord, we thank you that wherever two or three are gathered together in your name, you're in the midst of them, Lord. And, Father, we pray today for the power of your Holy Spirit to be moving in this house. We pray, Lord Jesus, your glory fills this place. Lord, as we worship you, let your glory fall. And Lord Jesus, we pray for a sweet outpouring of your Holy Ghost once again upon our lives and upon this nation, Lord. So, Father, we pray right now that souls will be saved. Amen. People will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yokes will be lifted. Burdens will be removed. But above all, the name of Jesus is lifted up, exalted, and glorified. We thank Amen. you for bringing Harry and Cheryl to us. Lord, we ask that you would anoint them, move through them, anoint the worship team, Lord, and move by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' Amen. mighty Before name. Before we blow the shofar, I just want to read a few verses from Psalm 81. Lord, just singing about you makes me strong. Just singing about you makes me strong. So I'll keep shouting for joy to Jacob's God, my champion. Let the celebration begin. I will sing with drum accompaniment and with the sweet sound of the harp and the guitar strumming. We're going to do that. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Blow the jubilee trumpet to begin the feast. Blow it before every joyous celebration and festival. For God has given us these seasons of joy. Who wants to be in a season of joy? Let me get two hands up. Hallelujah. The days that the God of Jacob decreed, let us celebrate and rejoice. But I just love that. Lord, just singing about you makes me strong. Hallelujah. Say, I'm strong in the Lord this morning. Let's blow those shofars and let's worship the Lord.
feel it, I feel it, I feel it in my bones And I just don't think I can hold it anymore The river is rising, flowing out of me And I'm coming alive, oh yes I'm coming alive
We're the people of God with a song to sing, and we're bringing our lives as an offering. We will dance for your glory, Lord. And your cross is the hope that we hold up high as we tell the whole world of your love and life. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Your head at you ancient gates We lift it up still comes in the morning hope still walks with the hurting you're still alive and breathing praise the lord don't stop dancing and dreaming still good news worth repeating so lift your Oh. 
hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Let everything Everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. You're still alive and breathing. Praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the heart. You're still alive and breathing. Praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the be more loved than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there's nothing I could do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind. You call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now, because you are just. Forever enough 
is enough You're more than enough Forever enough Always enough You're more than enough Don't wanna forget Sustaining love, I live to worship you. Oh, Lord, I live to worship.
Humbly I fall to my knees to proclaim your everything. Cause my life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You're my sustaining love. I live.
worship Jesus. We worship Jesus. Ita yara bakora barara la basita la 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 barara na 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 maso. Ita la 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 masi. Somebody's being touched in their body right now. Lift your hands, start receiving and thanking the Lord. Let him pour that healing in you whatever it is. Oh la la. Oh la 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 ba si di di. Father, we thank you for your great salvation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Far above all principalities and powers of rulers of darkness, Lord. We thank you that you have defeated the work of the enemy. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus. We come against those schemes by harassing spirits. The harassments must end in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus has conquered you. The Lord Jesus has you under his foot. And we thank you that he crushes your head. Mm. Harassments to the bodies right now. Go. Amen. Chronic pain. Yes. Right now you are eradicated from the body. Sciatic nerves. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Cramping in stomachs and intestines. Be healed. The Lord Jesus rebukes you. Chronic knee pain. Be gone. Their harassment. Be gone in the name of Jesus. The Lord declares that you have been praying. You have been seeking His face. You have been declaring His healing. And He declares that today, today, that thing is gone. Hallelujah. Today, gone, never to return. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every word that would try to rise up in judgment against you, from this day forward, you will condemn it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shame 
Eyesight restored. Amen. Eyesight restored. Optic nerves start seeing again. What doctors have said, they may know a truth. But Jesus declares, I am the truth. Amen. And I declare you made whole. Blood pressure goes down in eyes, back to normal in the name of Jesus. Blurred vision be gone. There are people in this room right now. Who in this room, the doctors, optometrists have said you have cataracts? Right now, you need to come up here, right now. You need to come. You need to come. We thank God for, for doctors. We thank God for nurses. They know a truth. But we know the truth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you're wearing glasses, I ask you to take off your glasses. Honey, can some of the elders help yes, you? Yes, if yeah, the elders just, will come and stand behind these yeah, individuals. So Amen. An oil. Everybody. Amen. You're just going to receive Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Just point to which eye when I get to you. We're going to anoint that eye. The scripture says that your faith shall make you whole. And we're adding our faith with your faith. And you are the healed of the Lord. Amen. Vision's going to clear right now in the name of Jesus.
be restored. Lubricant comes back. Comes back. Pick up. Pick up. Thank you, Pick up. Lord. Left. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Give Ooh, the Lord a Jesus. hand to praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. take up our tithes and offerings, I want to, I got to share this one thing with you. You know, the Lord wants to teach us every day. And he spoke to me very specifically about a Hebrew word called barak. And in that word, one, it means to kneel. But the same word also means to bless. So when we kneel in submission to God, He says, blessed. Blessed. Because it's a surrender position. And it automatically, God sends blessed. Thank you, Father. And that's what was happening. Thank People you, were saying, Lord, And in the spirit, they were bowing before God, asking God to do something. And God was doing it. His hand was coming down and touching people. That's our God. That's our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give Him a hand of praise again. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come before you today. We're preparing to take up our tithes and offerings to you. And Lord, we'll be taking up a special offering for Harry and Cheryl as we do each time when they come at the end of our service. But Lord, right now we're paying our tithes and giving our offerings. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you hold the keys to hell, death, and the grave. You went and got them back, Lord. We thank you that you've destroyed the work of the enemy. We thank you that you've redeemed us back to the Father and we can cry, Abba, Father. We thank you, Lord, not only have you accepted us, but Lord, you've made us joint heirs with you in your inheritance. And Lord, we know that God so loved this world that he sent you so that all might be saved who would believe. So Lord, we know that right now, as we share in your inheritance, that you came and gave your life for this world. And the Word of God declares in the book of Revelation that right now, gathered around your throne, are men, women, and children from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, and every kindred. And Lord, if that's what heaven looks like, that's what your church here on this earth that ought to look like. Lord Jesus, we here at Celebration, we throw open wide our own hearts, welcoming the nations to your kingdom. We throw open wide the doors of this church, welcoming the nations to your kingdom. Lord, gather us together, and may we worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, may we grow in the things of the kingdom together, loving one another, reaching back out to a world that doesn't yet know you. Amen. Now, Lord, we know time's short, 
And we thank you. We're believing for that last day outpouring. You've promised one more time you're going to shake heaven and earth and your desire is going to come. So, Lord, right now we call to the winds from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We call them to give up those that are being saved. They come to your kingdom with glad and sincere hearts. And, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we grow together in the things of your kingdom. You've told us to also pray for those that are in authority over us. We pray for the president, the vice president, the Congress, the cabinet, the Supreme Court. We pray for all the governors, Governor Cooper and all the other governors. We pray for every state senate and every state house. We pray for all of our local principalities, rulers here on this earth. Lord Jesus, we pray for them and their households. May the eyes of their hearts be open and may they find Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Lord Jesus, may they be baptized in your Holy Spirit and fire. And Lord, may the word of God be a lamp unto all of our feet and a light unto all of our paths. And may we all walk a highway of holiness together. Now Lord, we pay our tithes and we give our offerings. And Lord, your people have named their seed. You told us that every seed produces after its own kind. Some are praying for loved ones to come to the kingdom. Some are praying for healings. Some are praying for deliverances. Some are praying for heritage afar off. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that those seeds, they produce what they're being sent to do. And your word accomplishes what you've sent it to do. Now Lord... Joshua said, Seek you this day whom you will serve. Choose. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Lord, we give. And it's given. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Men and women pour back into our lives so that we can give again. So Lord, we declare souls, souls, souls to your kingdom. We declare the captive set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Yokes lifted, burdens removed, people baptized in your Holy Ghost. But above all, the name of Jesus lifted up, exalted, and glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You're free to come and give. But there's mercy new each morning, comfort through the night. My eyes are fixed on Jesus, and I'm going to be all right. I've got that holiday. There's a season for the struggle and a season for the prize. For my hope is never changing because it's anchored in.
Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up here, sweetie. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what. We are so excited. What a blessing this weekend has been. It's been four years in the making. It has. And uh, it's, uh, it's so good to have Harry and Cheryl back. And we thank God for all that he's done in y'all's lives. Harry, we're, we're so excited. He is our miracle brother. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, yesterday y'all had an awesome women's luncheon. Hallelujah. We had an awesome men's breakfast. Harry had a right now word for the men. And uh, we're excited about that. But, amen. Absolutely. Well, let me get this podium, and um, we'll go ahead and turn it over to them. But I, we ask y'all to stand, if you would, to your feet. Give a warm welcome to your brother and sister, Harry and Cheryl Salem. Amen. Come on. Come on. Give it up. Check one, two. I said, I don't have a light, but I'm all lit up on the inside. So <laughs> go ahead and roll my track, will you? Great are you, Lord. What a miracle day today is. Yes. Let's just keep worshiping for just a minute longer. You, you are a worshiping house. Harry leaned over and said, Wow, their worship is so good. It is so good, Pastor Benji. And you on the keys, worshiping. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Love that for my sister. Thank you, Father. You are light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You are hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great. Are you, Lord? It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great. Are you Lord? Just stand and worship with me. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great. Are you, Lord? It's your breath in our lungs. Pour out our praise. Pour out. 
Father. So we give it back to you in exaltation, in adoration, in worship, Lord. You deserve all that we have to give and so much more. We give you everything that we have. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the Jehovah of all things. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great. Are you Lord? All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you Lord? All the earth will cry, all the earth will shout. Your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. There's no one greater than you, Lord. No one greater, greater, no one. Great are you, Lord. You are the great Holy One. We worship you, we worship you. You are the great Holy One. We worship you. We worship you. There is no one like you in all the earth. We worship you. We worship you. You are my healer, my deliverer. We worship you. We worship you. You are my salvation. The power of the Lord is here. We worship you, we worship you. Thank you, Father, thank you, Amen. Father. You may be seated this morning. Amen, 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 amen. Glory um, to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. I know where to start, but I don't know where to start, but I know where to start. <laughs> Has it been four or five years since it's we've been? 2019. Five years. So it's been five years since we've been in your, yes. your nephews have grown. I remember you in all. In the Lord and everyone. Sitting at the dinner table. and uh, How many of you have been in our services before? And how many have not been in our services? Just a handful. So just a couple of you. Well, welcome. Uh, my wife and I have been in ministry now. Uh, Almost 30. 44 years. 44 years. And we've been doing this a long time. And uh, before we get into our message this morning, uh, how many of you know my story? How many of you have been praying for me over <laughs> the last couple of years? Well, <laughs> I, uh, when uh, Angie's more excited that, than I am to be here, I want you to know. <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to explain it in the right way. 
after what we went through as a family, and uh, you all stood and prayed for me. Amen. Um, the, the Bible was clear when uh, many got healed, only one came back to say thank you. And I'm here to say thank you. I want to be the one to say thank you. Um, the first time that I ministered after being in the hospital um, two and a half years ago for 11 days, I have eight days of my life I don't remember. I, I didn't have enough oxygen going to my brain, so I don't, don't remember eight days of my life. Um, but I told Charles, I'm only going back to those houses that I know stood and prayed for me. And um, You were on high alert. I, I, you were uh, on high alert intercessors. You were the high alert intercessors. I will get through today without tearing up, I believe. But the first time I got back in the pulpit, I could not, um, could not minister without tearing up because I know what God has done for me. And I know... Um, Overwhelming gratitude. And, and my wife and I kind of differ in our opinion, but I'm grateful for the doctors, for the limited knowledge that they had to help me. I'm grateful for the nurses. I remember one woman specifically wasn't a nurse. She was just a, a, um, an aide, a servant that worked in the hospital. And, and she was about this tall. I do remember that. And she would just keep bringing me blankets, kept bringing me blankets. Didn't speak any English. I never know her name. But I know when I stand before the Father, he knows her name. Because it's the unknown ones who we never can put a name to that have been standing in the gap and serving. And she brought me blankets to keep me warm all those days. That's the one I remember the most. So why I say that to you is so many times we think those who are up in front will be the ones standing in front in heaven. But no, the ones who have served Faithful. anonymously, Faithful. who have a servant's heart. You know, like Sherry picking us up the other night. And I told her in the car, I said, you have such a great servant's heart. And she picked us up at midnight, got us to the hotel uh, day before yesterday at 2, 2.30 in the morning. And... Uh, we wouldn't be here if she wouldn't have picked us up. <laughs> but I wouldn't be here if you wouldn't have picked me up. Amen. Because Amen. I know that I didn't even know my name in the hospital. But I know I wasn't alone. And this one over here, she got everybody praying. And I did not know it until I got out of the hospital. And, and just a brief part of the story I was about the 10th day or something because I don't remember the day they came in and said if you can walk four steps we'll let you go home it was on the 10th day every day I'd been praying this for God to story. send me a, a doctor who would agree with me we went through 10 of them before I found the 10th one and the 10th one was a believer that was about a minute and a and half believer, I had before she got to interrupt me. I just want you to know. And the believer so said. So nothing changed in the five years you haven't seen us. Nothing has changed. The believing doctor said, if you can get him to take four steps, I'll release him to you so you can give him the treatment we're not allowed to give. And I was like, wonderful. That's wonderful. He said, four steps. So I call Harry on the phone, and I said, you're today, no. you're going to take four steps. Well, the, the lady came in, the therapist, young lady, and she said, you need to take four steps without your oxygen dropping, and you get to go home. I said, ma'am, I don't know how long I've been in this bed, and I don't know how many blankets I have on me, but I don't believe that I can get out of this bed and take four steps. She said, well, we're going to try. So she took all the blankets off, and I got about one, maybe one and a half, and the oxygen dropped, and she'd go back to the bed. And so Cheryl called me, and she said, well, how'd you do? So I got about one step. She said, oh, you listen to me. I don't care what you have to do tomorrow. You hold your breath. You make them four steps. I got to get you out of that hospital. Well, 
You know, the voice of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Has a southern accent. Has a southern accent. <laughs> and I don't know if it was healing or fear, but I'd made the four <laughs> steps the next morning. And uh, the lady said, you get to go home. And by 4 o'clock that afternoon, uh, The doctor called me, home. and I said, how do you do? He said, close enough. That's all he said, so, close enough. Uh, I had lost 32 pounds in 11 days. And uh, I went into what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome. My lungs just would not function and carry the oxygen to my organs. But um, I, I, I know. And I got home. And I, I, I said to her, I said, uh, I said, I, I just thanked her. He said, oh, there's people you have to thank all over the world. Oh, I, I didn't and I'm do like, this alone. I'm like, and, and at that time, I could only say maybe three or four words at a time, my, my breath. And I didn't understand what she said. And we turned on the TV the next day, and there were people calling my name out, on praying TV. for me. The Star Network and. PBN or wherever, Copeland, or, and uh, I said, who are they talking about? And then they said my name. I said, they're praying for me. And I know there was prayer got me out of the hospital. When we went into this world on day one, I asked the Holy Spirit what he wanted me to do. And the first command he gave me was rally the troops. Now, the only and reason I mentioned I had that about. told everybody, pray. The only reason I mentioned that about seeing on TV, because I did not know. I did not know that people were praying for me because I was not conscious enough to understand that um, the Bible says that David had to encourage himself. I, I was not in the position to encourage myself. But it said that Aaron and Hur came along and held up the arms of Moses and held back the enemy while he was seated on the rock. And so I started to understand that. And then... Um, I had a lot of time on my hands. I, 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 wanted, I just, when I turned on the television, I didn't want to be preached to. I wanted to be prayed for. And so you might not have a pulpit ministry where you preach, but you have one of the most powerful ministries that is on the face of the earth, you and it's called pray. prayer. You can pray. I believe uh, there was a famous minister years ago, and he was asked, if you had your life to live over again, what would you do? And he said, I'd pray more. And the Bible says, pray ye one for another that you may be healed. And so those of you that prayed for me, you have a God-given promise, a right of reciprocity that when you pray ye one for another, that you already have seed in the ground for your manifestation of the harvest in due season when you need your miracle. And um, I'm just grateful. I'm humbled that God healed me. I'm grateful that you prayed for me. And uh, this one, you know, I got out of that hospital, and uh, she had all this stuff set up for me. I was on oxygen and everything. And uh, I... I uh, I said, you know, she said, why don't you sit outside on the porch? So now, this was a month later. He this thinks was this, it was this yesterday. Was the, this was the next day. <laughs> in his brain, in his brain, it was the next day. It was a month she later. Brings these, she brings these little one-pound one purple weights over to me and said, I just you need to start them. lifting those weights. I didn't and I said, say hey, that. I can't lift my just, hands above my head. I didn't say he had to lift weights. I just set them down in no, his No, you view. did. You so said, he would you know have he to lift those weights. <laughs> Well, I guess I spoke it without words. Because <laughs> uh, he looked at me and said, I can't even lift my yeah, hands. I said, you'll get there. You can you'll lift those get there. weights. So, so, You're uh, going to lift those weights. You're going to walk. You're going to run. You're going to be perfectly healed and whole. You're going to preach again. And I would just tell him every day, these, these, are, where, these are the goals. This is where we're going. You know, my, uh, we had a young lady that was a friend of our ministries, and she happened to be a nurse. And she would come to check on me. As though Cheryl took care of me daily. And, but she would come and check on me. And she I'd say would to come her, to give me a break. I'd say to her, I thought, <laughs> she came to give me a break. <laughs> and uh, those tormenting spirits. <laughs> and 
and she, 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 I'd say to her, I'd say, because if I'd ask my wife, am I going to get better? I know my wife by faith. Absolutely. You're going to get better by faith. And I'm like, but am I going to get better? You know how you're, you Dad get in Thomas? the, the yes, natural, the flesh. And so I'd say to her, am I going to get better? Yeah, you're going to get better. When am I going to get better? Next week. Next week, she'd say. Next, Next week. week would roll around. I'd say, when am I going to get better? Next, Next week. Next week. Next week would roll around and say, when am I going to get better? Next week. Wait a minute here. Okay, you two were in the months. other room, you know. But what she did was she set my expectation. Yep. Casting hope. Out in front of me instead of behind me. Be a hope caster. Be a hope caster for people. And Some my, people can't come up with any hope. If you don't cast hope, they'll have no hope. Cast hope for them. So my goal was get out of the bed, walk to the chair, walk to the end of the room, walk to the restroom, walk out the front door, walk to the end of the driveway, walk, walk to, to the, the neighbor's mailbox. driveway. And uh, so I can tell you today that I, I can do three to four miles. I can run a mile, and I ride my bike 10 to 15 miles. And it started so. with four steps. So many times you look at the distance, you feel like you have to go and you won't even start. But God says, just start. If it's one step, it's, if it's one deep, big, deep breath, if it's one movement, if it's one lift my hands and praise, whatever it is you have to do to start, start your journey toward your healing. Start your journey toward your miracle. You've got to start it because God's already finished it, but he can't make you start. He's already at the finish line, but he can't make you start. That is up to you. If you'll just start, God will finish this with you. So enough about me, but I just, I, I want you to know, I, I drug my oxygen tank around with mm -hmm. me. and uh, When he was walking four miles, he drug that oxygen tank. And we didn't start with that. We started with me pulling the oxygen tank on the golf cart because he couldn't pull it. He didn't have the strength. So I would set it up on the golf cart and go real, real slow, and then he could hold on to it like an IV pole. And then we got to the point where he'd need a break in 100 feet to sit down. So there's a chair. So he could sit down, and we'd kick his oxygen, and then we'd go another 100 feet, and he'd sit down. And then we got to where he could pull it himself. And then, see, it's a journey. Too many times we're so focused on the destiny that we forget the journey. And the journey with God is the most important part about life. To, heaven is our eternal destiny, and we're going there. But why waste the journey? We're here on an awesome journey. It can be filled with one miracle after another miracle after another miracle. And you know what that means? If your life is filled with a bunch of miracles, you needed them. Right? There's nothing wrong with needing a miracle. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the part of the journey of life. Thank God my life is filled with one miracle after another. Harry can say the same thing now. I, I am a walking, talking, breathing, confessing, praising miracle. And I needed every one I got. And I'm sure there'll be a few in front of me. And I'm going to walk right to them. I'm going to walk right through them. And he's going to get the glory. He's going to get the praise all the way till we cross over. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is a difference between a healing and a miracle. Yes. There well, is even, a difference. It's even listed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as two different gifts. So there is definitely a difference between a healing and a miracle. Now, I believe my miracle started when I got out of the hospital. That was your first it miracle. It was a miracle after 11 days at 32 pounds. I got out of the hospital. My healing has come as I've begun the journey to walk it out. And every day, one step, I walked it out. And now I'm in the recovery state. To recover it all. Amen. So when we pray for people's healing, we say, okay, we believe in an instantaneous healing. But there's also what I believe is this process. A miracle is we're still standing. The healing is we take our step towards our recovery. Our recovery comes when we get back everything that had been taken away from us. Everything. It said Job recovered it all. Now, 
there are stories in the Bible that we don't talk about. Nobody likes to talk about Job's life, but he recovered it all. all. And so if it was pertinent and applied, applicable for Job, why isn't it pertinent and applicable for us? It is. That we can have all that we had taken away and we can recover it because God's promised it in his word. And that starts with us learning how to receive. When Jesus, in John chapter uh, 20, I'm going to go to verse 22 for just one second. When Jesus was resurrected on resurrection morning, he went to the Father, saw Mary, said, don't touch me. I, I haven't gone to the Father yet. Goes to the Father. Just a few hours later, sunset happens. The disciples are hiding behind a locked door, afraid. Even though Mary has given them the word that Jesus has resurrected, the disciples are hiding behind that door. And Jesus, back on the earth now, goes to the Father, comes back to the earth. He walks through the wall. Now, I think this is funny. There is a door. We know it because it was locked. He could have used it, but for whatever reason, I think he has such a funny sense of humor, he thought, let's just walk through the wall. Won't that be funny? They're so afraid behind the locked door. Instead of me knocking on the door and going, surprise, I'll just walk through the wall and go, surprise. And apparently, he did something very similar to that. He just walked through the wall. But when he first walked through the wall, he said to them, peace to you. And then they're all astonished. Probably nobody's breathing. And he says it again, peace to you. And then he says the most powerful statement of our ever lives, if we really see it. He says to them, and having said peace to you, peace to you, then he said... He went over to them, and he breathed on them. He breathed on them, and as he breathed on them, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus has just been resurrected from the dead, and the most important word he has for humanity as he breathes Ruach breath into them is get your receiver ready. Open up your lungs and receive the breath of God into you because with the breath of God is going to come the power of God in the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, he didn't give the Holy Spirit right then. The Holy Spirit wasn't actually given for another 40 days. Well, 50 actually, 40, then 10 more, 50 days. But he was getting their receiver ready for 50 days. So many times we get so discouraged because we live in such an instant society. If it doesn't happen in the drive through if it doesn't happen in a second, if it doesn't happen the second pastor anointed my head, it's done. It's done. The manifestation's coming. It's the slinky effect. If you watch me on YouTube, you know I'm always doing this with the slinky. But that slinky's all touching, right? You ask, God gives. It's touching. The end and the beginning, the alpha and the omega, the question and the answer, all touching. And then earth happens. It's called time. And you pull that slinky apart. But let me ask you something. Did I add one inch to that slinky when I pulled it apart? There's not any more distance between the question and the answer than it was when it was pushed together. The exact same amount of distance is there right here. But this is eternal and this is earth. But there's no more distance between the question and the answer. There's no more distance between the giving and the receiving as it was in the eternal realm when it's touching. It's touching. It's touching. It's touching. Time is relevant, and time is your friend. And God is bringing you about to a place where you can receive anything, but you got to learn how to breathe and receive. When you breathe in the breath of God, just say, I receive. And whatever it is you need, I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the power of God. I receive my miracle. I receive my breakthrough. I receive the Word of God. I get pregnant with the Word, and I'm going to give birth to the Word in my life. You'll never do that till you get it in you, till you learn to be a receiver of the things of eternity. Woo. 
I'm being quiet over here. No, you have not. <laughs> I can feel you. You might not be saying it, but I can feel you <laughs> saying it. My, when I was ordained, my, the gentleman that ordained me, my spiritual father, said to me, don't preach to God's people. They've been preached to death. Just tell them what the Lord has done for you lately. So I think that's very important because we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. We know, not love this life until death. Tell somebody what God's done for you. We don't need to preach to people. We live in a society today where uh, attention span is about three minutes. But in three minutes, you can tell your story. Three minutes you can tell your story. My wife and I, and, and we won't take a lot of time, but um, with uh, Resurrection Sunday coming up, we want to talk about miracles. You want to talk about miracles? Let's talk about miracles. One of the miracles is that this song that my wife sang, It's Your Breath in My Lungs, and I Pour Out My Praise, was written around 2012. I was in a, a church service. My wife uh, stayed behind, I believe it was in Michigan or Ohio, or and, uh, and, and, and the, we got a call, and I needed to fill in for a pastor. So I said, I'll go. You stay. Do the service. My son picked me up at the airport. Long story short, I was not feeling well that night. Went to bed. Got up the next morning. I had a fever. Was not feeling well. Was short of breath. And I knew, and I had pain under my shoulder blades. I knew at that time I could tell I had the onset of pneumonia. I could feel it in my body. So he went to service and make a long story short. I'm standing there and my son said, Dad, what are you going to do? I said, well, if there's no pastor, I have to be there. And I take it very seriously. I didn't eat any food the night before because if I get food poisoning and there's no pastor and we had three services that day. And so I said, I, I'm going to be there. And so he got he drove me to the service. He's sitting there and in worship, like you all today, you don't understand the importance of your worship. The power that's in your worship, and when you're led by the Holy Spirit, what to worship, not how to worship. We have a lot of people wanting to know the how, but it's not the Even how to the worship. Who. It's what you worship. You worship to who with what you worship have from your heart and you're led by the Holy Spirit they begin to sing it's your breath in my lungs and I'm sitting there going I need God's breath in my lungs and so I'm going to pour out my praise and in about two minutes the fever broke the pain in my shoulders left I did three services that day I'm laying in the hospital having breathing problems my wife begins to sing that song to me repeatedly. Because it's his familiar miracle song. You say everybody has something you that's touched to you a at scripture. a certain time. You attach to a place. You might attach to a song. And she would sing that. And, you know, what you don't understand is that years before I got in the hospital, I had already been prepared how for the point of contact that I needed to raise my faith to receive my miracle. So when you said in church, you say, well, I didn't get anything for today. You don't know what you get today. For nine years from now. That you're going to need in the future. And it might not be just for yourself. So she would sing that to me. And I don't know who wrote it. I don't know who sang it. But I am sure grateful that the Lord gave it to him. Because it was relevant to me to be part of the manifestation of my miracle. So let's talk Amen. about miracles real quick. In, in Corinthians, the 12th chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. I like that. Amen. To another, the word of knowledge. I like that. Amen. Through the same spirit. To another, uh, faith by the same spirit, the gift of faith. To another, the gifts of healing by that spirit. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of the Spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one in the same Spirit works in all these things, distributing each one of them individually as he wills. Now, we've talked about tongues. We've talked about interpretation. We've talked about faith. We've talked about um, healing. But are we talking about miracles today? We talk about miracles that have happened in other people's lives, like uh, Kenneth Hagin or Oral Roberts or uh, Smith Wigglesworth. But if it was prevalent back then, why aren't we seeing them now? Because we are not emphasizing it. And we're not expecting them. I, I have a life filled with miracles because I had to have them, so I was expecting them. That's why I expect miracles. I, I, when I was 11 years old, I was crippled from a car wreck. God gave me a miracle, put a bone in my leg where there was no bone left. My back was broken. He healed that. I've been through three windshields with my face. Look at my face. I want Miss America after that. God is a miracle work in God. He's healed me of fibromyalgia and connective tissue disease. He's healed me of chronic fatigue. He's healed me of so many autoimmune diseases that it's hard to, to name them all. He has healed me of depression. He's healed me of migraine headaches. And when you've had one, you say, oh, just headaches. And no, no, no. When you've had migraine headaches, you're thankful when God does a miracle and you're, you're healed of that. He, in 2020, I wake up on January the 1st, and I've been wearing glasses since I was 28 years old, and I have perfect 2020 vision. On January the 1st, 2020, I have no contacts, no glasses. Why? Because God is a miracle working God. Now, why? Why did it happen on January the 1st, 2020? I don't know. I just am glad it did. I've been saying since I was 42 and my eyes got really, really bad, I've been saying my eyes are not abated. My youth is renewed like the eagles. That means my eyes are getting better, not worse with age. And I don't accept, well, I'm just older. That is no excuse. The Bible says your youth can be renewed like the eagles. It says your bones can be moist, your sinews can be fibrous. Why won't we just believe and receive what God says? So miracles. Let's, let's talk about miracles that uh, are, are, let's say, correlated to what's coming next week. Or is it uh, Resurrection Sunday? Yeah, uh, yes, next Sunday. Seven days. So let's go back to the beginning. In Luke, the first chapter, um, let's see, verse, uh, let's see, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah who served, in, and he and his wife uh, were, were servants of God. He served in, in, the, um, in the temple. He was a priest. This is the year of the priesthood. 24 is the number for priesthood. We're in the year of the priesthood. We have no more time. This is it. This is the 24th circle in tones of the throne room. We have got to get ready. They were blameless. They served in the, in the order of the Lord. But verse 7 says Elizabeth was barren. Verse 8 says, But while they were serving as priests before God in the division, according to the custom of the priesthood, a lot fell on him to burn incense, and they went into the temple of the Lord. It was his time to be the priest that day. And the whole multitude of people were outside praying in the, at the hour of incense. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. Now he goes in to pray. And an angel appears to him. And Zechariah saw him, and he was troubled, and fear came upon him. Hmm. Now, this is a man of God, and when an angel appeared to him, he, was, he got into fear. But that's okay at this point, because if I saw an angel standing before me, I'd be taken back. And then I'd wonder, why is this angel appearing before me? I, on the other hand, see angels a lot, and I'm not ever afraid, and I don't even ever wonder why. I'm like, what? I'm so, not asking why. What you got for me? That's what I'm thinking. I know you can bring a miracle. You got one for me today. I'll take it. I'm like, what did I do wrong, and what are you going to do to me? But the angel said to him, fear not, Zacharias. Your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you should call him John. Now, 
he probably said, your prayers have been heard. Pause, because there's a comma. In Zechariah, probably, there, what prayer? I've been praying a lot of things. Then he has to define it. He said, your prayer for a son. Now, you think about them. These, these people, this couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth, were in their 80s. Right. And how long must have they been praying for a child? Since they've had no children, they probably married in their teens. They probably started praying right away for a child. Probably prayed for 10, 15, 20 years. Probably prayed till she went into menopause. Probably prayed the whole time. Maybe stopped praying, but the prayers never stopped praying, by the now, way. Zechariah probably was a little confused. He was probably thinking this angel is wrong because I'm 80 plus years. My wife's 80 plus years, and we're going to have a baby. Now? Now? So he might have been in fear. Now he's confused. <laughs> Maybe but, a little afraid again. <laughs> So the angel has to clarify himself. He says, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. So this is not just about you. Hello. This is about other people. Maybe the miracle you're believing God for right now has a lot more attached to it than just you. So when Maybe you it has were... people attached to it, families attached to it, grandchildren's salvations attached to it. You don't know what you're believing for that will change somebody else's life. So where you were excited introducing me, see, it's right here. It's other people will get as much joy out of what you get because they know what you've been through and they can see the manifestation of a miracle. That is a witness. So it goes on and it says, for he will be great. He starts to tell me about his boy. For he'll be great in the sight of the Lord, and he'll drink neither no wine nor straw drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Oh, that was kind of a relief. I'm in my 80s having my first baby. I'm glad that baby's filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will also go before him. Before H-I-M with the capital H. So... Him. This is the priest. He knows Messiah's coming. He will go before. He will go before Messiah, the him. one you've been looking for. In the spirit and the power of Elisha, to turn the hearts of the father to the children, the disobedient and the wisdom, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What did John the Baptist do? What did he say? Prepare ye. The way of the Lord. Make ready. He's coming. Angels Prepare telling Zachariah. Prepare ye the way. Make ready. He's coming. Make ready. He's coming. So, yeah. so Zachariah, don't just say you're going to have a baby. Let me tell you about your baby, and let me help you get in faith about your baby, and let me tell you the power of this baby, and maybe you will understand at 80 years old why. Some people say to my wife and I, you're 60-plus years old. You're no longer relevant. Listen, it's I'm because we have so much knowledge in this world. But if you have all the knowledge in the world and you don't have the wisdom how to apply it, you don't know anything. So some of us who are a little bit older and have a little bit more gray, we got some wisdom to go with the knowledge. So I'm saying to a younger generation, listen to us. It's not that we know everything, but we know enough to help you avoid some of these things. He's saying to Zechariah, I'm telling you these things to help you avoid your doubt. And Zechariah says to him, how shall I know this? You have an angel standing before you, and he's a typical man. Prove it. Prove it. For I am old. So now he's doubting. He's, he is getting into the flesh of why in the natural this should not happen. He's thinking instead of believing. He said, I'm an old man. He's trying and, to work it out. And she's well advanced in her years. Don't point at me when you say that. Even she's though it's older than I am. True. <laughs> but the angel answered and said to him, I'm Gabriel. I love that. He makes a declaration because there's a quote. He says, I am Gabriel. And he says, who stands in the very presence of God. I love that. It's like, it's like Gabriel said, Zechariah, you don't know who you are, but I know who I am. I come from the presence of God. You're going to figure this out pretty quick. But this is not going to change. I come from the presence of God. I know where I stand. Do you I, know where you stand? I've come with a word from the very throne room of God. But behold, 
you'll be mute. Uh -huh. And not able to speak until the days of these things take place. For you did not believe my words, which were fulfilled, will be fulfilled in their own time. And that was not a punishment, by the way. God did not cause him to be mute because he was mad at him. God caused him to be mute because the word was going to happen. And his words were already contrary to the plan of God. And so he said, you are going to thank me for this later. You're going to shut up till the miracle manifests. And when the miracle manifests, I'll give your voice back. Because your words are the wrong words to be speaking when a miracle is coming forth. So the people waited, Zechariah came out, and he could not speak. Soon after the days of his service were completed, he departed to his home, and now in those days Elizabeth conceived. And she hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in these days. He looked upon me to take away my reproach among people. Now in the sixth month, an angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city named Galilee, of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, to the house of David, and her name was Mary. Now, now another we all talk about the miracle birth of Jesus, the immaculate conception, but the miracle did not start with her conception. The miracle started Elizabeth with and Elizabeth Zachariah. and Zachariah. Conception. Because Elizabeth and Zachariah he had were going to bring forth the forerunner that was commissioned to announce the coming of the king. And he was just six months forerunner too, by the way. We all talk about the, the miracle birth. For mankind, six. But you cannot talk about the miracle birth without the miracles that happened before. Number one, first miracle, Elizabeth and Zechariah served God. They lasted 80 plus years. They still believe. Somewhere along the line, she was still believing for a baby. We know so because she knew the name of, of the baby was supposed to be John. And as far as we know from the scripture, no angel had to tell her. So she was already hearing from the Holy Ghost, from the Spirit of God. He was already speaking to her. And she already knew the baby's name when Zechariah had to be told by an angel. Still didn't believe. She didn't even have to be told by an angel. But she believed. And she knew when she got pregnant, she was smart enough to know that people's words can hurt my chances of coming full term in my, in my miracle. So she hid herself, not out of shame, but out of wisdom. She hid herself for five, almost six months and did not show herself because she didn't need people to approve, give her applause. She did not need to perform for people. She already had her miracle inside her womb, even though nobody could see it and nobody could hear it and maybe nobody else would believe it. So she protected, and this is what people don't do in our day and age. You get a miracle from God and you go, ah, oh, thank you, Lord, and you don't even protect it. You keep on doing exactly what you've been doing. They got you in the worst trouble in the first place. And you wonder why you can't keep a miracle that God gives you. You're going to have to learn to protect the miracles that God gives you. You can't just be on fire for a week and just burn out. You've got to protect what God has given you and keep that flame going and keep that fire going and keep stirring it up. Like, like Paul said to Timothy, stir it up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Protect the miracles that God has given you. And in, in heritage, if you have the firstborn, the male is supposed to carry the, the father's name. name. Could you imagine her telling all her friends, well, he's going to be John. Well, who's the father? What do you mean, John? Who's ever well, heard what, of John? What, what, what? I mean, now people will stand in judgment. She knew, I better get away from people because they're going to start yak, 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 yak. Sometimes about me. the only way to keep your miracle is to isolate from people. Now, for my wife and me, I couldn't speak that much, and, and I was walking out daily, and she put me in a cocoon so that I could walk out my healing. A lot of our friends were hurt or offended because they couldn't talk to me. But I was in no shape. 
to talk. She knew that. She said, until you're strong enough, I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to hide you away for a while. Are you all right with that? Anything you say, honey, I'm fine with it because I want to get better. Now, one of the things, when a woman gets pregnant, they glow. And if you've been wanting a child, you want people to see that you're showing. The discipline in her little in her life was That's called wisdom. I'm gonna hide myself, although I'm so excited to show. I better protect because this is not about me, and this isn't even about my boy. This, this is, is about, about something that will affect the world. She had an insight because he was controlled by the Holy Spirit. And in the womb, John the Baptist knew Yep, it had been revealed to him. How do we know that? Because now we have Mary, who the angel appears as you get pregnant. She says, how can this be? She didn't question him. She said, just show me how it's going to happen. Because in the natural, I'd never been with a man. The angel says to her, not in doubt, but because you'd like to know how you can be part of the miracle the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He's going to hover over you, the frequency of you don't heaven. You have to be with a man. going to get inside of your womb, and the sound of heaven will be the word of God inside of you. And you'll get pregnant with the word, and then you'll give birth to the word, and the word will become flesh and dwell among us. Oh, and by the way, to encourage you, your cousin Elizabeth... She's already pregnant. Is already pregnant. In other wow. words, go to her. Wait a minute. I'm 14, 15 years old. My cousin Elizabeth is 80 plus years old. This should be an encouraging sign to me that this angel God has brought a word about another miracle. Right. And now why didn't Elizabeth get pregnant when she was 14 or 15? Because it wasn't, One time. think about the slinky. Because Mary hadn't even been born yet. Why did she have to wait till she was 80? Because Mary had, had to, to be become born. 14 or 15. It, and people Sometimes say, well, that's we, a coincidence. No. Ordained. Ever before, before her mother's womb. It was <laughs> set in motion. 2012, they wrote that song. Things get set in motion that we don't know are in motion for our well-being. Don't think that you are waiting because God is mad at you or because he doesn't have it yet or maybe you've not done enough. Don't, don't even start thinking like that. That's the devil trying to steal, from, steal, kill, and destroy everything that God has for you. But timing is everything with the king, king and the Lord of lords on the earth. And once we step out of earth, time will be different. But we're here in a time frame. And that time frame is God's perfect order for everything. So you don't, don't be upset. Don't be upset that, that God has had you wait 10 years or wait 5 years or wait 50 years. This woman waited a long time. And yet she never stopped believing the word of the Lord. She held on to the word of the Lord. And I was just thinking as you were talking. And you know, John, he didn't live a long life either. But he lived every second that was ordained for him to be here. And you know, I, I want you to know, if you're like my wife and I in our 60s, there are dozens of people in the Bible that were over the age of 100 that God still used. Yeah. Yeah. So when people tell me at my age, you're not relevant, brother. I finally got relevant. You look at the people over 100 that did some of the greatest things for God. Well, I find that so interesting. I believe that maybe it took an 80-year-old woman to have the wisdom enough to not want to show herself, to, to know how to protect the miracle. Maybe it took an 80-year-old woman to understand that my whole life and everything about me and everything God has given me has nothing to do with me at all. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a servant, and I'm here for God to use me. And whatever he wants to pour through me, I'm willing. 
And sometimes it takes to 80 before we get willing enough for God to be able to do what he needs to do through us. Now, it doesn't have to. So Mary's it doesn't have response. To. I started early. So Mary's response. I started response. at 17 letting God pour through me. So you can start early. Then by the behold, time you're 80, you're really ready. I am the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be done according to your word. To what you have said, I and agree with what left. you said. Now, I like that in two things. The angel delivered the message to Zechariah and left. The angel delivered it to Mary and left. He did not be, belabor it. He, he gave the word and left. A lot of times, people give a word and other people want an explanation. No, there's no explaining it. If it's from the throne room, you deliver the word, and go on down the road. Once Whether stated, someone I'm receives done. it or not. So he goes on and says, now Mary goes to the hill country quickly. She leaves. And she entered the house of Zachariah and Elizabeth. And as it happened, Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, and the baby leapt in the womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Be it unto me, even as you have said, she received the sound, then she carried the sound inside of her cellular level. She goes into Elizabeth's house, and she just says, Shalom. Hello. How's your mama and them? She just greeted Elizabeth, and in her greeting, the sound of God was in her cellular level. So now she doesn't sound like little Mary anymore. She sounds like God because God is in her. And so the sound that you have, the moment God gets in you, your sound changes. So people can hear God every time you say anything. They can hear God because God is in your sound. The babies didn't see one another. Because mm -mm. if you're pregnant, I can't see the baby. The baby can't see me but he can hear me but by the holy spirit john the baptist by the holy spirit perceived that the anointing that messiah was in the house is here messiah is here before you even say a word when you walk in someone's house messiah Yes, if you're walking under the anointing, they feel it. Don't people say, when I come into your host home, there's something that feels different? We had a young man in our house doing some work. He said, when I came up to your house, I walked inside. He said, I felt something different. Well, of course. So, you're ministers, aren't you? Yes. And then he said, I saw that big sword out in front of your house. There's a sword in the Sorry, Bible. That's mine. And, and, it, and he said, I wondered. But he said, I felt something. Yeah. Because you create an atmosphere that welcomes the Holy Spirit, who's omnipresent. And so you don't have to say a word. Because most of us say we fail because we don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. Just, Just let him get in the presence in the anointing. The healer. Be filled. Will Receive. Bring forth what they need. It's an amazing thing. So now he goes and says, and then she spoke with a loud voice. She declared, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is, was this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Why are you coming here? Well, because your son, John the Baptist, needs to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that he will not be stillborn, that the miracle baby will be born purpose. on an appointed time, and that his purpose will be fulfilled. She, this isn't for you. It's for him. Mary walks in, and Elizabeth does this, Pastor. Barak. Blessed are those who believe, His for they are the fulfillment of those things which were told to her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul does magnify the Lord. She began to sing and rejoice. And the spirit rejoiced 
and for she had regarded the lowly state of her maidservant, for behold, henceforth. And then it goes on and it says that Mary began to ponder these things that the angel told her in her heart. What she said was, it's not time to divulge what he's going to do. Because people won't be ready to receive it. This is a miracle season. There are, there are seasons. Ecclesiastes says for everything there is a season. There's a miracle season, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that God will do a miracle anytime. That the, that miracle season doesn't go in and out of season. But there are moments in time where it's even more obvious. Christmas, Easter, Passover, Purim. These are miracle seasons where God is so ready to perform miracles. Why? Because in that slinky timeline, he's already done it before. He's delivered. This is Purim weekend right now. This is the weekend that they celebrate the Jews being delivered from the spirit of death. It's, the, it's like prophetic that Jesus is coming on that weekend. It's prophetic Jesus is coming because we are delivered from the spirit of death. This is the time to celebrate miracles. Now, for time, we're going to wrap it up, but I want to tell you a quick story. And we'll close. A gentleman by the name of Dr. Oral Roberts had one of the greatest healing ministries of his generation and of our times in the last hundred years. And uh, I got to know him, and I got to be around him, and I got to serve him. I had seed in the healing ministry, so therefore I had a right to place a demand. My wife had a right, because I wasn't in my right mind, to place a demand on God's healing power. One night he had, he'd served the people with his ministry and laid hands on countless hundreds, if not thousands of people. And I don't know if you know, but if you've laid your hands on people and you're, a minister uses all of his senses at, at one time. And so afterwards, and I've I picked him up many times after the Great Crusades, and, he, and he's just like a he's worn out. It's like a 24 hour, 18 hour shift that you might have at work. He's just worn out. And going out the, the the back, this woman comes running up with a little boy, and she says, "Are you, are you Earl Roberts? Yes, I am." She says, uh, "I'm sorry, we had car trouble getting here. Would you pray for my child, my son?" And he looked at her and he said, ma'am, I, I prayed for hundreds, if not thousands of people tonight. I'm very tired. And, uh, you know, can you come back tomorrow night? And, he, and she said, no, we can't come back tomorrow. I'm just asking you, will you pray for my child? And here's this little boy. And he said, ma'am, I don't have the faith for your child to be healed. She said, I didn't ask you to believe. I just asked you to pray. I'll do the believing. If you walk in somewhere and you see something, you say, I just don't have the faith. You are not asked to do the believing. You just pray. He looked down at that little boy and he said, son, why are you here? Would you like me to pray for you for a miracle? And he said, I don't know about that. All I know is I'm supposed to be healed tonight. Not supposed, his little boy. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to, be to be healed tonight. tonight. He prayed. That little boy got healed. healed. Story's been told countless times by other ministers, but I'd heard it from the man himself. Tonight. He said, but I got back to the hotel room that night, and I was praying, and the Lord says, I give you no credit for that healing. He said, because all I asked you to do was be obedient, pray. I'm asking you to pray. But mama had enough faith. I'm asking and the little you to boy say, believed. I believe. I was in the hospital. I did not have it within me to believe, to believe let alone pray. You're able and that's the important of what you play in the body of Christ when others can't pray or others don't believe 
All he's asked you to do is, can you pray? And can I pray for you right now? Do you believe in a miracle? I, I, I've watched people's testimonies over the last couple of years that they, did, they, they needed a heart valve transplant, and then they went in, and they didn't need the transplant. They believed they got a miracle. And when I hear people telling their stories about whatever, I'm just using that as a paraphrase, but there is a, they talk differently than when they got a healing. It, it, there's just a, and, you, and I just know. And I just want you to know, I know what happened to me. I know. And if, if anybody wants to come up and give me their opinion, my response to them is, I didn't ask you for your opinion because I know. I know. God because other people will have opinions me. about you. But what do you know? Me. I know. I know I'm delivered. I know I'm set free. You know, Paul was in prison and Paul got on a ship and, 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 and the ship was going down. He warned him. And then he, they get to land. And then he's getting the fire. And the snake bites him. And they're like, ah, see? You're a devil. That snake bit you you're a devil. Then he shook it off and it didn't kill him. They said, you're a god. That's how quickly people can have an opinion. Not a fact. Paul just needed to get to Rome. All the rest of it was semantics. Get to your miracle. And we don't take time to pray. We get flippant. Dr. Robert said to me one time, I'd knock on his door to pick him up, take him to the Crusades. Sometimes he'd bust through there like a loaded for bear. Sometimes knock I'd wait five minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes and finally he'd come out years later and all he'd do was drive and never talk years later I asked him I said uh, can you tell me why sometimes you'd just come right out the door sometimes we'd wait 5 10 20 30 minutes I mean the people were waiting the worst the the, the, the psalmist was was running out of songs weren't you worried about the people he said no I said well can you explain he said yes he said I never came out of my room, stood before the people, unless I felt the anointing of God to pray. He said, because if it was just me up there without the anointing, I've never healed or delivered or saved anyone in my life. So I needed to be in the presence of God. And he said, I never went out without preparation. When Jesus was whipped at the whipping post, the preparation for your healing took place. They could have whipped him once, but it was 39 times. Because he said, in, in his flesh body, my body has to be prepared for the manifestation of my blood to bring forth the healing for every disease. Think about that. So, Father, I believe in a miracle. I am so thankful for my doctor. My doctor in Texas, both my doctors in Texas, my doctors in California, I'm thankful for the nurses. I'm thankful for my oxygen bottles. I'm thankful for the medicine. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for the I prayer. Believe, I I'm thankful for your son. And I'm thankful I'm for the miraculous. My that he was crucified, dead and buried. Right now. But on the third day, the miracle. I believe. Of his resurrection. I'm expecting my miracle. And the ability for him. Right now. To take back the keys of hell, death, destruction. I so I don't have to go to hell. And I, I believe. For a miracle. I believe. Each
each person who you can hear my voice. Able to do this. The miracle of healing. I believe. Be made whole. The miracle of deliverance. To be loose I from that which has bound you. You are able and the miracle to do this. of eternal life. To escape the grip of hell. Behold, and embrace the glory of heaven. Be free. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Receive. Today's your day. All you have to say Be is one word. Yes. Behold. Yes. Believe. By saying yes, it means be it unto me, Lord, as you have spoken. That if I profess you as my Lord and Savior, all my sins will be forgiven. And I deny hell and all the powers that it has. And I embrace heaven. And I have a life in eternity. With Christ Jesus. You are able to do this. Now for the miraculous move of God in your life. I in your mind. In your I body. In every fiber of your being. I Be you are able made to do this. Whole. I'm expecting my miracle it's within me I'm expecting my miracle it's within me In Jesus name it's within me So be it. Thank you for being our friends, extension of our family, for your prayers, your love, your support. Friendship, your obedience to God for this house. For these people. For the Father is saying to you. You've taken care of my children. And I'm taking care of yours. Hallelujah. A miracle took place for Mary. The moment she said, may it be according to your word. Because immediately she left to go to Elizabeth. All things are possible to those who believe. We're going to take up a love offering for Harry and Cheryl in just a minute. But I'm before, because I know people will give and then people may head out. As Harry sh shared earlier, people have got to hear what God has done for you. How will they hear except somebody tells them? We do. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, despising not our lives, shrinking back from death. Tell people how awesome He is. Tell people what He's done for you. And watch the miracle come to people's lives. Watch what God does. We get tickled every time Harry and Cheryl come. We remember back to the day we were introduced to them on a the telephone. <laughs> oh, 
David Kelly Pesamenti. David called Harry and Cheryl. And David and Kelly were with us. It was just a few days after 9-11. Call, they said, what are y'all needing in the house? And we told them. And they said, well, you need Harry and Cheryl to come. Hey, Harry. Harry, it's David. We were up at Biltmore House. It's, it's David, Harry. Uh, those friends of ours right here, they need y'all to come to, to Morganton. Okay, yeah, we'll be glad to come. And he laid the phone down, didn't hang it up. Because you're going to love these guys. These guys, man, let me tell you what, Harry's an Arab. He's got this hair, he's got this long beard, and they're stuck in New York right now. And Harry's going, hang the phone up! Hang the phone up, David! <laughs> if you're going to talk about me, at least hang the phone up. <laughs> and we're just like, Lord, what a relationship. If we could have gotten to California, we'd have been there. Because y'all came. You came and ministered to this house after my heart surgery. They came in the hospital room when I had MRSA, and Harry was wrapped from head <laughs> to toe. And he had a little slits where his eyes were. <laughs> He's walking in like this. And Cheryl's going, let me say your scar. See it. Open it up. <laughs> I want to look. I know it. Well, we love you guys. Cheryl, I love hearing you play, but I need you to come and sit down. And I need Harry to come and sit down. My beautiful, beautiful wife's going to come back and she'll pick up playing on the keyboard. The Lord told us years ago that we were to do things this way. And we have. We believe in you. Your best is yet to come. I believe that we'll be here until Jesus comes. I believe it with all my heart. I don't think it's going to be long. We're going to set this offering bucket here in front of you. And I'm going to pray for the people before they come. And then I want to pray for y'all after they give. And then I'll let you pray. So, Father, right now, I pray for your people. I pray, Lord Jesus, your people, they come, Lord. And they're blessing our family. They're blessing Harry and Cheryl. And, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that this is their lives, it's the lives of these individuals that they're giving from the sweat of their brows. And Father, I pray back into every household. I pray blessings, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as they give to Harry and Cheryl, I pray, Lord, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings in whatever area it may be of life. I pray for miracles to take place. I pray for healings. I pray for deliverances. But Lord, you be exalted and glorified. And we thank you right now that it comes back into each household. In Jesus' name, amen. You're free to come and give.
My wife and I stretch our hands out. We're grateful to the offering that goes into our ministry. Father, we pray. Not just what the Bible says, some 30, some 60, some 100 full, but in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, May the Lord thy God bless you as he promised you and make you a thousand times more, more effective for the kingdom, more powerful in this world, a thousand times more for your family in every area of your life. May God bless you. I was asking the Lord. He told me I've got to read Psalm 91 over the house before we close. As we've done every service since 2020, pray over your homes, anoint your doors, and walk your property lines. Speak the word of God over your dwelling place. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. And I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. For he'll save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings you will find refuge. And his faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You'll not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction, the sudden death that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But danger will not come near you. You'll only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and to defend and guard you in all of your ways of obedience and service. They'll lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against a stone. You'll tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent. You're going to trample them underfoot. Because he said they set their love on me, Therefore, I will save them. And I will set them securely on high because they know my name. They confidently trust and rely on me, knowing I will never abandon them, no, never. They will call upon me and I will answer them. And I'll be with them in trouble. And I'll rescue them and honor them with a long life. And I'll satisfy them. And I'll let them see my salvation, declares the Lord. Now, Father, we pray over Harry and Cheryl before we dismiss our family today. We pray your blessings upon this man and woman of God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for saving them both and doing miracles in their lives. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have seen and walked with them through these years. And, Father, you have ordained them for such a time as this. It is the end of days. It's soon coming, the Lord Jesus, to get his bride. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for this man and woman of God blessing each one of our lives. Pastor Vanjie and I, we thank you that we can call them family. And Lord, they are family to this house, and they know that we're here for them. So we speak blessings. We ask that you would open doors that no one could shut. You would shut doors that no one could open. And Father God, may they see mighty miracles of God in the days of head. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Stand with me, if you will. I want to pronounce blessings to over you.
The Lord spoke to Moses and told him to tell Aaron to pronounce blessings upon the people. Blessings were given with an outstretched right hand. Blessings were received with an outstretched right hand. I pray the Lord will bless you and the Lord will keep you. I pray the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and he'll lift his countenance upon you and he'll give you peace both now and forever. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. Everything you put your hands to is blessed. Your barns are blessed. Your fields are blessed. Your kneading boards are blessed. The fruit of your womb is blessed. You're blessed when you rise up. You're blessed when you lie down. You are the head and you are not the tail. You are on top and you are not on the bottom. You are the redeemed of the Lord and the redeemed of the Lord shouted, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We hope that you have a wonderful Palm Sunday. If you live in the area and you have no place to worship, we invite you to come and be with us next Sunday as we celebrate resurrection. We pray the Lord's blessings upon you. God bless. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. God bless.